Welcome to Monet Cafe, your virtual art studio where you can learn about art from the convenience of your own home. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. And you know, there's a lot going on in our world today. And I thought, what would make us happy? Let's paint an adorable kitty cat. I've had some requests to paint cats anyway. So I thought I'd share this cat painting tutorial with you. And I think it will brighten all of our spirits. Now here's a little personal message from me. Welcome artists, friends, visitors, subscribers to Monet Cafe. I usually hide behind the camera, you know, and do voiceovers, but I thought at this particular time in our world, uh, it was a good just to talk to you guys. And, and I wanted to share that we are experiencing something worldwide, obviously, that I think can be as beautiful as Monet Cafe. What do I mean by that? We have been so blessed in our group, I know so many of you know this and feel this, to have a place that is beyond differences. We share in the commonality of art. We put differences aside, whether it be political, religious, whatever, and, uh, and it's just such an amazing, beautiful place to be. And I think the world can experience it that now, uh, that feeling of something bigger than all of those problems, something that we can come together and share uh, our hopes together and work together with each other. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that have made that possible. And I hope the world can emulate what we already have. Okay, now I just feel like I'm getting a little emotional right now. But anyway, so... I'm doing a, a cat portrait and I saw this and, and the reason I think it was a neat video to do now is because I didn't plan it this way. Cats are the most popular thing on social media. It's just crazy and awesome. And I think it's just the sweetness, the curiosity of cats and just their adorable um, mannerisms that people love so much. And I saw this photo of a cat that a friend of mine on Facebook had posted and she lost this sweet little kitty and I just thought the face was so adorable and I thought you know what someone in our group had asked would you please do a cat video so it all just kind of came together too perfectly and now I think it's a perfect video to create during this uh, trial in our world because cats do make us happy. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I'm using for this cat portrait and uh, some of my techniques of how to create fur and you know lots of things that I, I think maybe some of you would like to learn. So what I'm using here is pastel matte uh, pastel paper and uh, I am coming to growing to love the surface. It's not as sanded as you art paper or some of the other sanded papers it actually feels rather smooth but it takes oh and i'm wearing my monet cafe artist uh, designer series bracelet i love my bracelet there's three styles and thank you to all of those who have already ordered it really is helpful especially at this time <laughs> in the world with so much cr uh, craziness going on for me personally and the designer of the bracelet um, but anyway this surface um i like it even though it's not super sanded, it takes so many layers and it's really awesome for portrait work. I'd like to try um, a person portrait on this as well. Very, very happy with uh, doing portraits on pastel matte. Also too, I'm using a majority in this painting of this Terry Ludwig set that's called Umber Shadows and Shades. I've used this in a few other videos. I got this set at Christmas time along with some others. I love it. It's a gorgeous, uh, almost neutral type of palette. Um, the ones that are sticking up here are ones that I've already used in this particular painting. And uh, I love this set uh, because it's got these nice neutrals, but they're still colorful. And they just happen to be nice colors for this particular portrait. So this is a great set. The Terry Ludwig pastels behave beautifully on the pastel mat. I did, I'll, I'll share as I work um, obviously going to do some commentary and a voiceover of the whole process, um, but I also use quite a few of the new pastels. These are great for getting in small places. They're a little harder. I love my new pastels. They're, um, they're not, they don't get the um, attention that the softies do, but they're very useful and valuable in a studio. So with that said, let's get started on the sweet little kitty. I'm going to finish this painting, of course, but you're going to see the process um, all the way through. 
and my prayers are with everyone. I'm so thankful for Monet Cafe. Keep doing what you're doing. We have a beautiful place of wonderful artists and people. And welcome, newcomers. Subscribe to this channel. You're going to love it. All right, guys, let's do it. To get started with any kind of a portrait, I usually like to do a pretty decent sketch. And this is just a charcoal pencil, uh, just a medium darkness. And once again, here is the pastel matte paper. This particular pad comes in four colors there. And it's nice that it has a piece of glassine sheet, uh, a sheet of glassine in between each page. Um, I guess because if you worked in the tablet, you could protect it. Now I took the little kitty photo and I put it in Photoshop and I used um, a feature called cutout. Uh, I like it sometimes because it simplifies the edges. And I'm speeding through this um, sketching part because I have uh, quite a few other tutorials on sketching. I have one that wasn't too long ago on sketching dogs and that's one that I slow down. I talk about my process and uh, give you some tips and suggestions on on sketching and uh, ways that hopefully would help you out with that. Now, I don't always do a grid. I usually just do dots on the side of my page, you know, to kind of uh, get my eye um, or, or to get a, a gauge of where things are in the reference photo when I transfer it to my drawing surface. Uh, but in this case, I really wanted to get that little face right. It was kind of a long format too, so I went ahead and did some light grid marks just into thirds. I just divided my um, my surface into thirds and also my reference photo. Now I zoomed in a little bit here. I like to get started with the eyes a lot of times when I do a portrait, whether it's pet or a uh, person. Uh, I just feel like the eyes are the soul of the painting. And I don't always finish, I typically don't finish the eyes. I just like to get them kind of in there and to get them right, it makes me feel better. <laughs> now, getting eyes correct is crucial. If your eyes are off a bit, it really um, decreases from the quality of your painting or, you know, the how pleasing it is. And uh, here, all I did was get in really the general colors, the pupils, and eyes, even with human eyes, they always have a little shadow kind of under the lid and usually around the edges. You have to remember the eyeball is a, is a sphere, you know, so you're painting it like it's a sphere with the, the highlights and the shadows, just like you would a sphere sitting on a tabletop. Um, of course, it's encased. Uh, but anyway, so I, I usually like to get a little fun with the colors with the eyes. So I'm just kind of having fun with this. And then yeah, pretty soon I, I move along. But when I feel like I've got kind of the um, a little bit of the eyes and the personalities usually when I move on. Now here's the set of the Umber Shadows and Shades, or Shades and Shadows, I can't remember, uh, from Terry Ludwig. I find these work really well on this pastel matte paper. Um, I usually like to kind of carve in a little bit of a background. As with landscape painting, it's good to go ahead and get in uh, basic values and big shapes first. And uh, I knew I didn't want to do everything just like what was in the reference photo. That's the beauty of having an artistic license. We can, you know, take it out and use it where we see fit. Um, I did like some of the general um, values going on, but I wanted to, you know me, I like to um, enhance the color when I can. Purples always make great shadows. Um, because the, the cat is really just kind of like a, a fluff ball, I thought that was what was so cute about her. Her name's Maggie, and I can't wait to share this with the owner. Her name's Julie. And um, But it was just a big old fluff ball kitty, and um, uh, the fur uh, was fun to do. Um, a little bit challenging in some places I'll talk about. But um, I'm getting in, just like I do with a landscape, uh, big areas of value. I'm kind of looking at where my darker values are, my medium values are, and my lighter values are. And I like to maximize when I've got a pastel in my hand to just go ahead and get it wherever I see fit. And this is, again, just like a landscape painting. I don't like to get too fussy too soon. Um, I usually will uh, work on the face more after I get the, the basics in. Um, uh, again, I just feel like if, if I don't get the face right, there's, to me, there's no sense in going on with a person or an animal. Um, it's, it's very different from a landscape painting in that there is um, a little bit more specifics you have to get right. And especially if you're doing a portrait for someone in particular. Now, I wasn't hired to do this one. I just love this picture and I saved it. Um, 
But uh, if you are hired to do a commission for a pet or a uh, person portrait, then you definitely want to get that right. You want to get who they are right, you know, their, their uniqueness of their face right. Um, so uh, those, it, it was, what was, I was going to say was interesting about this fur. It was kind of hard to see where things were because the cat was really like a little fluff ball, which is so cute. But um, it was kind of hard for me to see where are those lower feet? Is that black part underneath it, the feet, or or just the color of the fur? So that part was a little uh, interesting. Now the whole painting probably took me about three hours. I worked on this in little segments. Um, as most of you know, the craziness that's going on in our world, in case this video is watched way later, it happens to be March of 2020 when we're going through the whole worldwide pandemic coronavirus um, situation where so many people are um, out of work, um, having to self-quarantine, a uh, lot going on. So that's again at the beginning of this video, one of the reasons why I thought this would be a lighthearted, fun video. So, um, so that's, I was still taking care of a lot of other things while doing this. So I came back to my easel multiple times to finish this. Um, and uh, you see up there on the uh, top of the head, I often like to add purples or blues in shadowy areas. Um, one of the things that I like to do in a, in a portrait or landscape is to not have everything super detailed. You're reserving your detail to areas of interest. In this case, uh, for me, it's the cat's face. And I'm going to try to keep um, the rest of it a little bit more subdued. Uh, but again, I'm getting in my darks here. I've gotten a little bit of the some of the other values in there, but I thought uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this face um, since I've got a, a little bit of a color uh, roadmap going here. So I'm using a Terry Ludwig dark. I think it's the eggplant. And if you squint your eyes and look at the reference photo, you'll be able to see that I'm putting the darks in where the darkest parts are on that cat. And the way this works, now this is what I wanted to talk about a little bit more with painting fur. I had hoped to actually just, um, not on this painting, but get another piece of pastel paper and do a little example, but oh, too much going on right now, but I can explain it as I'm working. The way it typically works with fur is really not much different than it works with a lot of other things in landscape paintings. For example, you know we talk about uh, getting your darks down first. Like if you're painting a tree, you can really paint in the big massive shape uh, in a darker value and then you gradually layer your lighter values on top. Well, that's the way it works with fur. I, uh, I actually do end up having to darken even what I put down right there. But you, you get your darker values in and then you gradually, and you keep them very loose. Don't, don't worry about doing individual strokes at this point. Uh, I have seen paintings that are um, where people really focus on every little hair or individual um, whisker and everything. And uh, I focus more on impressionism and uh, I like more of that artistic painterly feel. So that's usually how I, I end up teaching more that way. So again, big shapes, darkest values, and gradually layering upon that. And what happens is when you get your darker values down, even if they don't cover up the whole surface, that's okay. You don't always have to blend. Oh, later, keep an eye out though. Later, I actually do use my uh, little tool. Uh, it's a chamois cloth uh, that you would use to wash your cars. And I found it works great for blending on this pastel matte paper, but I want to make it, it clear. It doesn't work very well. I tried it on UART paper or Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. It's too gritty. This pastel matte, like I said at the beginning, is not so gritty. So uh, the chamois cloth just kind of glides right across it. It's really great. Um, again, so still you can see I'm not focusing on individual um, uh, hairs of fur in it yet. I'm just, it, and it goes through very much like we say in landscape painting. I find, you know, my paintings, even portraits, go through like an ugly phase or a, uh, I think some artist has called it like, goes through puberty, <laughs> you know, when everything feels a little awkward, but that's okay. I have seen some artists that I've watched work that do 
portraits of people or animals and for some reason they look great the whole time um, but mine definitely go through the um, the puberty stage <laughs> and then you know no matter how long you paint there's times when you still doubt yourself and you're, you're like is this really going to go somewhere and you, you find yourself doing that with so many paintings um, but anyway so uh, still I'm also too not just getting in the big shapes I'm still refining the face I'm wanting to get where those little um, line, you know the dark places in between the whiskers of a cat? I'm trying to get them fairly accurate, you know, when I'm getting them down. And where the little mouth is. I think the little kitty's nose and mouth is just as important as those eyes. They, And this particular kitty, Maggie, had such a little smushed face. So you want to make sure you capture the personality and the um, uniqueness of that particular breed. Now I'm going to be working on the head a little bit more, uh, getting a little creative with color, and uh, just getting a bit more detail in with the face. So I am going to add some music at this part, uh, or at this point. I also, I apologize for speeding this up, but because it was about three hours long, I knew that my Wi-Fi upload speed out here in the country wouldn't accommodate a three-hour video. So I apologize, sometimes I have to speed it up, but sometimes I think it's a good thing because some things can get a little monotonous. I mean, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And if you watched every single stroke for three hours, it could get, you know, oh, tiring. <laughs> so I think I will uh, zoom in a little bit on the face here so you can get a better idea. And I'm going to add some music for your listening pleasure. But don't go away. I'll be back with more commentary.
I thought I would show some footage of my ring light. I have some of you ask me about the light that I use in my studio. It's called a ring light. I got it on Amazon and I like the fact that it allows you not only to increase the intensity of the light, uh, the, the button there, you can turn it and it makes it, whether it's 100% uh, illuminated, I come around so you can see it, or when I turn it down, it's lower. So you can control the intensity of the light. It is an LED light. And the bottom, if you push that little button in the middle, I had the hardest time figuring out how to do this. You can change the temperature of the light. That 5800K, the letter K stands, I think it's for Kelvin. It's the warmth or coolness of the light. So you do have some temperature control as well. I find this light cast a really great overall illumination and doesn't create a lot of shadows when you paint and you can put your iPhone right in the middle of it too or your camera so it's a great light and um, I am thankful I'm thanking my patrons I was not able to purchase that until I started getting some support from my patrons so thank you thank you patrons all right now at this point uh, you can see I've gotten in more of the dark for the the body I've gotten the basics of the face in I, I do have to kind of uh, fix or rectify um, there's that place in the face there where the fur's got to kind of come over top of it um, but again getting the darks down first and then uh, just gradually layering uh, over top of it and once again you do not have to do a whole bunch of individual um, pieces of hair on the cat uh, I do a little bit more on the face again because that's where I want the attention drawn it's kind of that way in the photo too you notice the fur of the body is a little more um, vague and uh, looks velvety and soft so uh, I work on trying to keep that not as the focal point of the image. I also uh, didn't want the background to be too distracting. You'll see later at the, how, I, um, how I work the background. I don't want to blend it but at the same time I don't want it to be quite so chunky as it was um, as you see here. All right, a little bit more music, and I will be back with more commentary.
here's where I'm using the chamois cloth. It's just a little piece I cut off of a larger piece. And again, it works great on the pastel matte surface, not, not so on UART or Sennelier. The grit in, the, in those other papers uh, seem to hold the cloth and you can't really blend with it. But I did want to get a softer look, a more velvety look to the fur, so that's why I did the, the chamois cloth uh, blending to it. And it worked really well. At this point, you'll be able to see uh, the concept I was talking about uh, with getting your darks down first and then layering on top of that for the fur. I was kind of playing around with the color palette. Um, the, the body was just mostly gray, but you can always add a little bit more of purpley or magenta to create shadow and interest. And uh, just like I added it a little bit on the ears there and a little bit on the nose, you want to make sure your painting's consistent. So if I use a color in one place, I try to look and see where else I can use it. So the painting has an overall cohesiveness to it. So you'll be able to see now as I uh, layer that the, the right now it looks very flat on the body. So I gradually just take those Terry Ludwig pastels and just move my pastel in the direction of the fur. I do have to kind of correct a couple of times and add a few more darks, but you see how that's just giving that um, kind of blended look to it by adding uh, not, not individual lines, some kind of wider uh, chunky marks. I'm using the side of the pastel to do that. And this was, I, I've never done a cat that was this furry, so it was a, a little challenging for me um, to try to uh, represent it that way, but uh, it was fun still. I enjoyed, who wouldn't like looking at this cute little face all the time in the reference photo? So, um, okay, more painting, and uh, I will pop back in when I get to uh, a little bit more on the eyes and the whiskers. where I began to work the background. Again, I like to get an idea of some of the background colors, but not get it in, um, not commit to it right away until I'm done with the painting, because I might decide I wanna uh, kinda change up the colors a little bit, have them a little darker in value in different places. But I really did like the look of the turquoise uh, in the background because there is some of that orangey color of the cat, uh, some of the reddish, a uh, little bit of magenta shadows, and I thought that turquoise looked really nice. So. Uh, again, the cat sitting on the tile floor, it was kind of hard for me to see where the shadow was. So, and also where, again, where his feet are, what part, I, I mean, I can see that little front foot. This is a little cute little foot, but the rest of it's all kind of just, like I said, it's just like fluff, which is adorable. But I, trying to reconcile that in my mind was a little harder. Um, so anyway, so I just get basic darks in and then just gradually start layering on top of that. Um, so uh, I, I really enjoy backgrounds now. I used to over fuss with them and over blend them uh, to create, a lot of times when you blend something, it pushes it further into the background, but if you over blend it, it just looks dull and flat. And so I've, over the years, I've gotten to where I usually try purposely not to 
over blend them. I did do a little more blending on the part uh, at the bottom near the fur or kind of to the lower left hand side. Um, but again, don't don't overdo it. Um, walk away. I, I like to do this when I paint, but I had to kind of, uh, I, I did this not purposely in this particular case because again, I, I had so many things I was trying to do because of the life changes with um, just the whole virus situation and how, gosh, not only my life being impacted financially in other ways, um, but also lives of my children and family members and uh, other things you're dealing with. You guys know. I don't have to tell you guys. You've got your own stuff, and man, isn't it great to be able to paint. I hope you're getting some painting time, and um, it's just a way to get your mind off of everything. Okay, you can see now here again how I'm just kind of layering on top. Noticed how I had the darker colors down first, and then gradually start adding the lighter on top. Same, same as with a tree, you know? So that's a good thing. It's not a lot different. But there are some things, like I said, that aren't the same as a tree. A tree is very forgiving if you get a branch or a leaf in a place where it, you I'm don't see it in the reference finishing photo up and or I'm in real also, life. I'm going to zoom in, face, in just a minute so uh, you can you've see. Got some another rules you thing follow. that really makes it look <laughs> so, realistic is uh, this is there's just about to get finished in a, up. In an um, eye. Uh, I think I'll add just a little bit more music and a little reflection like wherever the light source is. And it's always hard for me to do on camera and film it because of my vision. I have to get so close to the surface of the pastel paper that my head gets in the way. But I try to do it here. You'll see. I try to get close enough to, for you to be able to see. Um, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm still working on the background. See how I'm kind of blending with the pastels? I'm not blending with the chamois cloth or anything. And again, I'm trying to figure out how that fur is laying on the floor. It was rather interesting and still adding a little bit of the uh, using the new pastels for some of these um, pieces of fur towards the end. Okay now I'm getting close. I've got a new pastel. It's a harder pastel. I've already done the eye that's to your left. You see a little white dot? Now I've got a little yellow highlight on the eye that's to the right but I also want to add that little white highlight. Now I've found a I'm going to move my head. I found a little sharp point to this new pastel. So I've got to look really close to get that. You got to get this in the right spot. And so I kind of feel my way and get that little, you see that, that little highlight. It really just makes a difference. It makes it look, uh, actually it gives a wetness look to the eye. Um, you know, so because our eyes do have our, our natural tears on them. Now I was also using a new pastel uh, I, I see some artists that always get the whiskers just so perfect and right, um, <clears throat> but I don't know, mine, mine don't look as perfect, but I feel like it's okay because I do like that um, textured look a little bit. Um, but anyway, just getting in a few of the whiskers that are just so signature for, that say cat, you know, and it's the same with dogs and cats. They usually have more whiskers than you think, and uh, you know, you don't want to overkill but um, just remember they've got whiskers on their little snouts. They've got whiskers, oh not whiskers, but fluffs in their ears that stick out. And they've also got the little whispers on top of like almost where their little eyebrows would be. Um, so, you know, it's the neat thing about being an artist is it really causes you to examine and look at our world more than we normally do. I never knew how big my dog's ears were until I drew him. <laughs> you know, it's the, and cat's ears are usually very big too, so or larger than you would think. Um, now I'm getting a little of those whiskers underneath the chin. You know, he has a little highlight on that little cute little chin and cute little face. Oh my gosh, just a cute little kitty cat. Um, so finishing up here, and I hope you guys have learned from this. I hope you found it therapeutic. Even I find it therapeutic just to watch other people paint. So I tried to pick some soothing music. And by the way, I'm going to be adding some music from my son's uh, music. He is an entertainer and he is totally out of a job right now. I mean, that's his main job. He plays and sings all over our area in Florida. And, um, and he has zero work right now. So he's starting a YouTube channel uh, to offer quarantine music therapy. He plays some awesome music. He's a one-man show, by the way. He does live looping, which means he literally loops over himself. There's not one pre-recorded bit of music. And so uh, so he's quite the entertainer. And I'm going to be sharing his 
a brand new YouTube channel really soon, but I'm going to be using some of his music as background music to my videos. I didn't have quite the right one for this painting, but I will soon. And I hope you guys will subscribe to him. I'll share it. I'll share that later. So anyway, I'm just trying to help my son. You guys know, I'm sure you have lots of family members that are really challenged because of all of this. All right, going to finish up this kitty. Oh, it's finished. Look at that. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're healthy and well. I pray protection over all of these things. Thank you guys. Happy painting. Subscribe if you haven't. Become a patron if you'd like to. Only $5 a month and be blessed.